Nya nya. Hello everybody. Um, today I'm going to be going over how to set up a snail's trail renderer for Avatar 3.0. Um, it's actually the way I'm going to be setting it up is with a toggle system. Uh, it's actually very beneficial to use a toggle system with Avatar 3.0 uh, because it'll actually disable the trail renderer. So when it's off screen, that it doesn't show. Um, uh, you know, it, it still will still render. Um, so the point and, and the benefit of putting it behind a toggle is that it actually disables it entirely. So there is no um, extra draw call that's being incurred on everyone just for having your trail renderer present. Um, so you can actually turn it off so you're not causing a disruption uh, in, a, in a lobby. Um, so to begin with, um, I'm going to start with an already um, mostly configured Avatar 3.0 avatar. The only thing that will not be on it is the um, animations. Uh, I don't have the FX uh, layer on it obviously yet or anything like that, uh, but you'll see that I already have like view, lip sync, eye look, and everything already here. Um, for information on how to set that up, you can uh, check out the many other tutorials that exist on how to set up a uh, Avatar 3.0 avatar. So now that we, you know, we have our avatar in place, um, let's start with the required components that we will obviously need. So the first, we'll need to create a uh, menu. Um, personally, I like to put things like markers and lights and other things in a tools menu, uh, which gets buried under another menu. Because uh, that's one of the nice things about the Avatar 3.0 system is that you can have menus within menus. Um, but for now, we're just going to start with one top level tools menu. Uh, and then we can create the parameter, our parameters. And then we can create um, the controller, which we can call FX because this will be the FX controller. Um, we'll be doing all of these uh, tools within the FX controller. And also, just so you know, um, if you're setting up gestures for your avatar, you can still have this play alongside gestures. Uh, you don't have to worry about it interrupting your gestures. It'll actually blend in nicely. Uh, since it's dealing with the marker outside of your body's mesh, it won't uh, interact with the mesh and or mess up anything with like your hand gestures. Uh, but we will be tying these two gestures when we set this up. Um, we will need to create uh, a few animations. So I'll just do that. And then I will, just so I have them all there, um, just clone that a few times. Uh, the first one we will be creating is marker on second one we will be creating is marker off. This will be used for the toggle system. Uh, marker off will turn off the marker entirely. Uh, marker on will turn the marker on to, to be used. Uh, and then we want activate marker. And what, the, what this will do is bring the marker into the scene um, so you can you know move your hand around or finger depending on how you want to do it and draw out what you're saying. Or, you know, just draw. Um, and then finally, reset marker. Okay, so that's our four. Um, for our two, two that are reset and activate marker, we do want to make sure that there are loop time and loop pose enabled. These marker off and on will not receive looping. Okay, so now the next step. We want to actually get the marker. So we grab in Snail's marker prefab, we grab his marker prefab and simply drag that onto your index finger or wherever you prefer. Some people will put it in their hand if they're going to have it like as a pencil in a hand um, or in, in 
this case, I like it on my finger. So I'll do that. Um, you'll see the marker is way too huge. Um, you can position the marker however you like in your hand to match the animation effect you're going for, but in this case, I just want it to be right at my fingertip. So I'm going to shrink that down to the right, the right size, about 0.01 should do. Okay, and then I will actually remove this mesh. Will not be needed. So I'll remove the marker, mesh filter, and marker or mesh renderer. But further in here on trail source, there is a script that is missing. This is something that was for VRChat uh, SDK2. We won't be needing this. Um, we can just remove that right off. And in here, you can also set up how you want the, uh, the renderer to render. In this case, I like to have it use the built-in gradient, so I'll use gradient. And then I'll also set up the way I like my gradient. There we go. Okay. So we can test this by messing with this Z value. Turn the trail source on, set the Z to zero. Click on your avatar, give it a bit of wiggle. You'll see your finger or your trail moving around with it. That'll let you know that you've got it configured up correctly so far. Just make sure to come back over to it though and revert the prefab and turn back off trail source. Okay, so from there, we can um, begin building our animations that we will be needing for, uh, for this to work. So I like to take the um, animation, actually, and apply it directly on, so I can edit the animator um, straight off my avatar. But then also put it in the appropriate place here under playable layers, FX, FX. And then come down, of course, to expressions, and then put your parameters, the correct parameters, and your um, menu, the correct menu. So tools here would be that menu we created. All right, so the next bit is the animations. We will need to come in here and we will need to create two parameters. Make sure you have your avatar selected like I had and okay, two parameters. The first parameter we need to create is gesture right. Could be gesture left. It's whatever you want to use to activate the marker. The second parameter I need to create will be toggle marker. And now why toggle marker? Well, let's take a little side trip to why. So this parameter is a custom user parameter. Down here in parameters, we need to define it. Toggle marker as parameter four. Then when we go into our menu, when we go to add a control, so if you select the menu, add control, you will see the parameter show up here, toggle marker. You can set that to one. We'll let this be a toggle. and then we'll call it toggle marker. So what we've just done here was a lot actually, just for one parameter. We went to parameters, and our parameter controller created it. Went to tools, and then created the menu item, uh, the toggle item for the toggle marker. 
set the value to 1, make sure it was a toggle, and then come back and we have our toggles. So now we can drop in then our two um, animations that we'll need. Activate marker and reset marker. But we'll actually need to create first an empty that will be our idle. Right click on it and then set the default layer. And then we set our, we have to build our state machine. So starting from any state, we make a transition from any state to reset, reset marker, activate marker, idle. Okay, so on our, um, actually we need, we'll need a, third, a fourth state to idle. So we'll have two states to idle, and you'll see why in just a second. So the idea is that on any state, we'll go from that to one of our uh, gestures, or, or one of our items. So we want to go to activate marker. For that, we can use um, finger point, which if you look up in the documentation, uh, if you use gesture right equals two. For this, we don't want to have exit time, but we do want to have a fixed duration. We want it to be 0.1, and we want it to loop on that fixed duration. And this is to prevent it from uh, having uh, weird uh, jitters between the animations. We want to make sure it cannot transition to itself. We want to make sure the interrupt state is the next state. Same deal here. Okay, just a quick check. Okay, but with reset marker, we want to make sure the condition is three which is open hand. Okay, so that means two and three are taken up. So that means all other states we need to return to idle. Now we could set up each individual one. That theoretically does make sense, but there's a reason I did two. So we have our two. I'm gonna set the first one to have a condition of less than two. Our second one have a condition of greater than three. Now, a little tutorial and understanding of um, animations uh, states and how they work, um, uh, just so uh, in the future, if you have any other crazy ideas or um, wanting to try different things, uh, if you have conditions here together, this will act as an AND. But if you create two different transitions like this, it'll act as an OR. So a Boolean OR from this, or Boolean AN from conditions. Okay, so less than or greater than. So that should set up this state machine. Uh, we, yeah, and the same thing here though with um, these uh, transitions, we wanna make sure that they are set up appropriately. So I already goofed and I put this all in the wrong layer. Um, let's just go ahead and copy this. And we'll create the layer, um, in this case, tools. Well, no, 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 marker. You always want to make a, a layer based on the toggle. Set the weight to 
Uh, and then we want to create a layer um, gestures, or well, in this case, right hand gestures. And again, set the weight to 1.0. Always make sure the weight is on 1. So we created just now the gestures for right hand from base layer. Let's just copy those out, put them in right hand gestures, and paste. We can go back to the base layer and actually just go ahead and destroy that. Those will not be needed. Okay. So now, um, the, the marker toggle itself, we need to set up. Take marker off and on. Go ahead and drop, drop those in there. We want to make sure the initial state is marker off. So if it's not, make sure set default state is on. Make a transition from marker off to on, then make a transition from marker on to off. From marker on to off, make sure there's no exit time. This will not have a fixed duration, nor a transition duration. We'll have an interrupt of next state. Set the parameter to when toggle marker equals zero. Same deal with marker off to on. Has no exit time, no fixed duration. Interrupt state is next state and toggle marker equals 1. And now let's create our toggle between off and on. I'm going to go ahead and save this just in case. Okay, so now that we have our uh, animation controller built and set up, let's actually edit the animations. Let's come back to the scene, click on our use our avatar. So there we go, scold. And then we go to the animation. So in the animation, we want to edit the, you'll see all the individual animations come up in here. We want to edit each one of these. Starting with marker off. See if we hit record, we get that crumpled state, but don't worry, just removing the um, animation or animator or the animation controller off the animator now removes the crumpled state so you look fine when setting it up for um, you know your preview uh, snapshot for uh, VR chats uh, you know import so let's go ahead and um, add the property we do need to use add property because if you try to navigate it through hierarchy it will um, change the controller you're trying to edit. So we want, to, want it to stay on this controller. Um, I believe also locking the inspector will help uh, keep it in place while you um, Oh, no it won't. Okay, so that, that doesn't even work. Do not rely on that then. Okay, so we do absolutely have to use add property and then click on armature and then trans, or uh, trans, uh, go, go down to where your transcend is the word I was looking for, uh, to your marker. So we are doing marker off, so we at find marker is active. Turn off, marker is active. <coughs> is active. Uh, find the endpoint. Bring it back. There you go. And make sure both keyframes are reflecting it as off. Next is marker on. Same deal.
and make sure they're together. And that they're on. So next thing then, activate marker. Activate marker is a bit interesting. You have to find the marker again. And this time we have to find the trail source and then the transform and position. And you'll see here that it says the position is negative 1 e plus 5 or negative 10,000. We want to make sure that is now 0 so it'll render. In this case go ahead and just I delete the keyframe at the end and then come back, copy the first one, move to the next frame, and paste. Just make sure it all shows zeros and that is working. And finally, reset marker. Same deal, we have to find yet again the marker. So do the usual transcending down your armature till we find our happy, happy, happy little marker. Doo, doo, doo. And then we're looking for, this time, the trail renderer. And inside trail renderer, we're looking for the property time. Add that. You'll see that by default's at 120. Delete the extra keyframe as usual, set the first one to zero, and copy, move to next frame, paste. So there you go. Make sure it's all good. And that will reset. Okay, now let's just double check everything to make sure it's working. We have our character set up. We have our menu, our, we have it as FX, we have our tools and menu, we have our menu there, we have our menu set up with the toggle of value 1. Okay. And then we have our parameters. Okay. In the animator, we have uh, marker on and right hand gestures. And the parameters, gesture right, and toggle marker. Okay, so it turned out on my test that I actually had it backwards. Um, as a little quick annotation, uh, reset marker should actually be 2, and activate marker should be 3. The problem there is that I had um, a hand, open hand, uh, and finger point backwards. Okay, so if you double checked everything and made sure that it was good, you should be ready to upload it. Um, and from there, then you can uh, just remove the controller or FX controller off of uh, the animator. Set that to none. and then go over to the upload. Once you have everything ready, and I'll just leave it like this for now, uh, just go ahead and give it a name. I'm going to just call this Trail Renderer Test and upload. And then we test it. Open hand, it'll draw. 
finger pointing. It resets. And when in the menu, you can toggle it on and off. And if we're trying just like that, we can also toggle it on and off there. But there you go. Uh, that gets the point across. Um, you can you, you see how everything is working. Uh, you can adjust this to however you like, uh, modify it in any way that you uh, feel is better for your um, setup. Uh, I hope this helps um, and helps you uh, learn a bit more about Avatar 3.0 and how to set up uh, you know uh, features like this um, for you know other uh, prefabs and other uh, tools. Uh, but thanks for watching.